What I'm running right now, it's not just a picture, the code is already identifying the defect. So this is the exact segmentation of the defects that we have. Hi, welcome to this new video. We'll see now how to build a visual inspection system using Python. We will see first a quick overview of all the steps that you need to, on the practical side, implement to do the visual inspection. And then also we're going to see more in depth some use of, of the Python code and also some implementation to identify the effects in this specific case of the production of mobile phones. So let's go. Uh, what's the idea of visual inspection? It's a machine that with a camera in real time identifies the defects. For example, here we're using, this is a proof of concept. We're using a data set where we have a training of 1,200 labels where we identify all defects, uh, scratch defects and stain defects. We have multiple images with different fonts, different parts of the phone where we have different defects. In this case, now we are scrolling with images where we have oil. Uh, now I will go through this. So you see even if we have more of them, Let's now, let me find the stains. This is an example where we have oil and we have also some stains that are correctly recognized. Oil, even if it's not on the screen, so also on the white part. And then also scratches. You see that we have correctly identified them, like all the sides. So we have the square where it's identified correctly, these three scratches. Here we have many more scratches. And now let's get uh, an overview, a general overview of the project before entering into the specific with Python, where later we will show again, we will make a step back to see how to make the segmentation and the general steps to do this. Uh, the idea is that you have a conveyor belt. This is a 3D reconstruction, so it doesn't matter the shape, it doesn't matter the size. You have a conveyor belt where the products are passing on. At some point, at some stage of this conveyor belt, you want to have a camera. So let's say that you want to identify the defects in this location right here. So you need to have a camera right there. When products are passing here, there will be a visual inspection. This is going to happen in real time. It's going to happen without, uns without your control, so unsupervised. And there are different options that can happen. Either you can get an alert if you want some alert. You can get a report if you don't need to get a real-time alert you can directly stop the conveyor if the defect associated requires like immediate action. So there are so many things that you can do automatically, like implementing automation with the vision inspection uh, to this system. So you want to have a camera. Where do you want to have a camera? In this location where you want to identify the defects. How many cameras? That, well, that, that, that depends on uh, where you want to identify the defects. If you want to identify defects, uh, surface detection from the top, let's say here, you will have a camera looking down so that you can see this part here. Do you want to uh, see defects from all around the product? Well, in that case, you need to have multiple cameras. So one will be here pointing there, one camera would be pointing there, another camera will be point pointing there. So we have, okay, and one also on this side. So we have five cameras that will cover almost all of the six sides because of course we cannot have now the, the lower part of the product unless you are able to move it. All this camera will be connected to, normally you don't need to have any advanced servers or cloud. It can be either a small board device that you can have there locally. So somewhere here you can have a small device like Nvidia Jetsons or similar devices. You can have a laptop, you can have a desktop computer, or in, clay, in case of a more complex task, a lot of cameras, then you might have a server uh, if the company is bigger and it, you require some more advanced stuff. But generally with a computer or a small board device, it's more than enough to do the vision inspection. Let's keep this simple and practical. Let's say that you have a camera and you want to identify only one surface. What you will you do is you put the camera then you record a video. You want to record a video with a stable camera so that you have a footage that later can be used with the Python code to create the software to identify the defects. You can use an industrial camera like this one, but let's keep things very simple, especially if you want to uh, do some prototype, if you want to realize the, pro the, the proof of concept, go with just a webcam, unless you have some very hard to uh, detect detect defects, something very sophisticated. Even a webcam is good enough. You record the video, 
Uh, after this, we load the video into an image or video annotation tool. Uh, why? Because we need to annotate each single image explaining where exactly is the defect because we will use this later to train our custom model. There are so many annotation tools. CVAT is one of the most popular, so that's why I'm using it. And it's also a very good ratio price to what they offer. There is a free option and also some paid option, which is not so expensive. So uh, that's a good way to go. So what do we do? We have here a video extracted from the video. There are all the images, all the data set. So if I scroll, you will see here now we have all the images not annotated. The annotation process consists in something like this. We need to get the defect. So we draw polygons to select where is the defect. For example, here we have the oil and we draw the polygon surrounding this, uh, like this. And we do this for all the images. Of course, it's a very long process and you can delegate this job, but also there are many tools also integrated in the annotation tools that can help you speed up this quite a lot. For example, uh, using segment anything option, we put a bounding box and then automatically it's identified the defects. Of course, it doesn't work always well, but uh, it's some tool that we can use. Once we have everything ready, we take the image data set and we train a custom segmentation model. In this case, I have a notebook that I use. And by the way, everything that I'm showing you right here now, it's part of the PySource.com community. So now this is only a general overview of what you can do, but inside the community, we get practical. You will have instruments to build computer vision software like this one. So if you want to know more, check PySource.com slash community, link down below in the description. So this is one of the notebook that I use. I created this notebook to make the training steps so simple because it doesn't require much uh, coding. It's just a notebook that you follow, you put the images and then uh, you follow the steps and at the end, there is the training and then you get the model. So you get the model on your machine from the images integrating the code. So let's go. And now we're going to see some live coding from scratch where from this last part, we can get the image and we can get the segmentation of the defect. Of course, there is much more that can be built into this, like uh, the previous part where we grab the frames from the camera, we take the snapshots, but this cannot be done in a very short video like this one. Uh, so if you have any questions, just uh, ask me in the comment and in other videos, we can focus on other aspects. Now let's, let's import CV2. So CV2 is the open CV library, which is the main library that we use for computer vision projects. So open CV is a must. Uh, what we do now is we want to do some prototypes. So we just load one image because the core of this product of this uh, software is to identify the defects. So once we identify the defects on one image, then we can easily move this into a video and then into the live camera that's placed on top of the product. cv2.imread and we're going to load the image where we have our uh, fonts in this case. So let me find the path. I have this on images and then oil. I will take one of the images like this one. To make sure that this is the correct one, let me show the image. See, so in uh, show uh, EMG and then EMG, cv2.wait key zero to keep everything on hold. And now let's run this. Uh, here we have the image, so everything is correct. So let's now go to the next part. We want to load the segmentation model. So from YOLO segmentation, import YOLO segmentation. This is a custom library of that I made for implementation of Ultralytics YOLO, and it's only available on the community. If you want, I have a lot of free videos where you can get some other free source code for segmentation if you want to play around. But if you want this one specifically uh, or similar to this one, you will find in the community. Uh, EMG, and then let's now perform the segmentation of this image. So what we want to do is we want to pass this into the detector and then we want to get uh, extrapolate what it's detecting on this image. First, we load the, the, the segmentator. So let's say YS, YOLO segmentation is equals to YOLO segmentation. So we load an object and we will use this now to perform the detection. 
EYS dot detect, we want to perform the detection on the EMG. What are we going to get in return of this? We're going to get bounding boxes, classes, segmentations, and scores. Now let's print uh, all of them. Bounding boxes, scores. And let me now run this one. And of course, there is some problem because I didn't put the model path. So the model that I created the best of PT model to detect the defects on the phone needs to be passed right here. And now let's load this model, best.pt. And let's run this. Uh, right here we have the information regarding the bounding boxes, so like the rectangle surrounding the object, the class of the object, so which identifies the type of the defects in this case, if it's a oil, if it's a scratch, or if it's a stain, because you can put as many classes as you want when you train the model, the segmentation, so we have the exact polygon where the defect is positioned, and the score, like the confidence, how confident this is, the uh, the detection is correct. So what we have to do now is we have to use this information and put it into the screen. So what we do is we loop through them, we loop through the defects of so four, bounding box, class, segmentation, score, in, zip. So we loop through all of them at the same time, bounding boxes, scores. And now let's uh, only draw the bounding boxes for the moment. And to draw bounding boxes, we need two points. We need the top left point and the right bottom point. So we have extract this x, y, x2, y2 equals bounding box. And we can print them and let's also draw a rectangle x, y, x2, y2. And for this, we're going to draw a rectangle on the screen, cv2.rectangle. Where do we want to draw the rectangle? We want to draw this on the image, uh, the points of the rectangle. So we need point one, point one is x and y, and then we have point two, which is x2, y2. Uh, then we need the color, let's make this green, uh, 0, 255, 0, and then two, the thickness of the rectangle. Uh, that's it, like, that's it. Only with this basic code, we have the defects uh, identified. We can draw the segmentation, of course, we can do that. So segmentation is a polygon. So we can draw the polygon, c2.polylines. On, we want to draw the uh, segmentation. Uh, then the polygon is true, uh, is closed. We want to close the polygon. And then the color, let's make this red. So zero blue, zero green, and 255 the maximum of the red. And let's make it two pixels thick. Uh, before I move further, I already noticed some error here. Polylines, EMG, segmentation, and this. I'm very used lately to have the copilot write all these basic functions for me and I'm forgetting them. So like there is some pros of using a lot copilot because uh, you now rarely need to write these functions from scratch, like to draw polygons and so, so, so on. But when, when you don't use them and you go later to write this from scratch, then you might forget about it. Very interesting. So uh, we have the polygon. Let's now uh, run this. And now we have here a rough version of the display of this. We have like the perfect polygon uh, showing here the oil. So this is the, the code that pretty much I was showing you at the beginning of this video. So if we loop through different images, we will have like this detection. And the precision is so high, it's like uh, around 98% for what I saw from the data set. So it's incredible the quality that you can detect even uh, with a small number of images. So I highly recommend to implement this one if you're a developer, if you have a, if you have a company, if you're a company owner, uh, if you have even a small production, try to implement this by yourself because you can do this and the technology is available today and it's the right moment to implement such stuff and it will be more and more possible going on. I hope that everything was clear for you in this video. If you like this video, you can subscribe, like, and I will share similar videos in the future. This is all for now. See you in the next one.